in various ways, I would say. First thing is, since we are so far away from having the balance between gender interacting together, it is always a very unsymmetric situation. It means for female scientists that they are, for example, asked for many, many participations in committees and reviews and presentations and so on, because we're trying to get the balance, but there are no balance numbers, balance numbers of scientists, female scientists. And on the other hand, it also in a way distracts us from just doing science together because there's always this additional request for working on gender equality and getting more women in science. And all this is something that is just so far away from what it should be. And this is the most normal thing that male and female scientists work together. And this is on the other hand, something that for us who are, for example, doing science and at a university level, there is not much we can do to change the societal background for this, which is maybe still a traditional role model for men and female. And this is something which then leads to the fact that fewer girls, for example, go to the technical disciplines. And this is what we then see when we're trying to hire ladies, that there are not enough. What we can do is try to compensate that by having maybe a particular care for female scientists, trying to specifically look for candidates, female candidates that would follow our open position calls, and then see that we, once the, we have them hired, can develop them in a particularly uh, conscious way so that they don't get lost during the process. But again, we are fighting against classical role models that we still have a lot fewer parental leaves from fathers than from mothers. And this is something which, again, is another way that affects this inequality. But we're making progress extremely slowly, but maybe at some point we'll reach it.